Now that you've seen a general description of what Minitab does, let's take a look at some of the functions that are going to be useful to you when you do your first exploratory data analysis and really want to start understanding where is this variation coming from. Okay, what we'd like to do now is take a look at Minitab and how it can be used to analyze in this exploratory data analysis. What I've done is I've taken one data file here in this column C6, it's called total seconds. That's the Friday call answer time. Now I can present it in a couple ways. So first, let's show you what it looks like in terms of enumerative data. So if I go to stat, basic statistics, and graphical summary, and I say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store total seconds in there, and it's going to calculate then statistics based on 95% confidence interval. So I click OK. So now watch what happens in the session window and also what happens in terms of the graph showing up. So there's the graph and here is the session window. So it says results for this data file name and the summary report. So it doesn't actually do any analysis other than what's in the summary report. And so what I see out of the summary report is it's got some graphical data. Notice this high peak here close to zero and the long tail. This is characteristic of time series data. So we want to have short answer time, and indeed there is a bias towards the short side. The median is indeed very short, but the mean or the average is pretty long. And so we see here is the information in the box here. These are the calculated statistics. So this is the Anderson-Darling test, and the p-value is 0005. And what that says is the data is not normal. Okay. So we'll come back and we'll talk about non-normality tests a little bit later, but here's the mean, 379 seconds. Standard deviation, 609 seconds. The variance, ooh, look at that. It's 372,064. And the sample size on Friday, they got 9,203 phone calls. The minimum was one second. The first quartile, 45 seconds. So 45 seconds was a reasonable time, but only 25% of the data. The median was 93 seconds, so in a minute and a half. 75% of the data in 503 seconds, and the maximum was at 4,482 seconds. And then we see confidence intervals for the mean, the median, and also the standard deviation. So this is the graphical summary. That's the enumerative data. Now, I can't really figure out how to go and do any corrective action here. I just see the problem. <clears throat> so I see the long tail in the data coming out here. And I see that there is this desired state to be very short. So what can I do to get this information in a different perspective? So again, this is the enumerative view, just like you would get if you were analyzing the data out of Excel. But if we go to stat and we go to control charts, control charts for individuals, individuals charts. And we take a look at exactly this same data. If we go to iChart options, we'll see that there are tests that we can perform. Now we can choose lots of different tests, but the first test is the most important one. It's is there excessive variation, more than we would expect to see in this process. So we say, okay, let's just use that one test, which is a standard test, and let's see what the options look like. And so Minitab is going to crank, and it cranks, and it cranks, and there we get the result. So this is the chart that we showed you in the PowerPoint presentation. So here we see that there is some time here where the data is going from expected performance to unexpected. Okay, this is excessive variation. The blue dots here are all about data that's within some sort of expectation based on the upper confidence level. Okay. So this is the upper confidence level. Here's the lower confidence level. And that's basically plus or minus three standard deviations around the average performance. But we see nothing below the zero, okay? Because what's happening at the zero level is we can't get below the zero. So in reality, this is a long tail distribution going out this way. And then we can see the time history. These are by events rather than by time, but each event has a recorded time. So we could go back to the event number and see what was the recorded time interval. But if we see the recorded time interval, some of these times that are very dense, for instance, in the afternoon, we wouldn't really be able to understand them very well in a graphical sense. So this gives us the time series view. 
And this allows us to understand where is the best of the best. So the best of the best is in this morning shift between midnight and 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, why is that the best of the best? Nobody's calling. Those students are working that shift. They're probably doing their homework or watching YouTube or playing some videos, okay? Maybe they're messaging their friends because there isn't any work. Around 8 o'clock in the morning, people start calling, and they call for the morning. They take a break. They're calling all afternoon. They take a break. And then in the evening, the students are either able to handle it or the process isn't working very well at all. And so we've got a bimodal distribution here. So based on those things, we've learned something about the process. During the morning shift, when the students are by themselves, it's working fine. During the daytime, we have the standard workers. Those are union employees that have been trained to operate this, and they're taking the bulk of the time in that practice. You say, okay, well, that's all interesting. So what actually can we figure out that's doing? Now we have to sort of staple ourselves to these telephone calls and go find out what happened at each of these. Now notice if I brush on that, that means putting this mini tab cursor, it tells me this was observation 19850, test failed one. So it says it was excessive variation, but that's the long one. So I should be able to go into the physical record I have and say, what was 18, 19850 observation? Who called? Why did it take so long? And understand in the rec secondary records what's actually going on in the process. In this way, I'm trying to un uncover those sets of operational conditions that have created this type of variation. And so then we can go back and understand the data again in a more detailed way. Another thing we might want to do with this data is to take a look at this, excuse me, uh, from a, click the wrong button there, yep, uh, not from this, this point of view of uh, this statistics, but take a look at it in terms of the distribution. So we have some other statistics here that are talking about the number that it answered in terms of different time zones. So I can go take a look at this as a one-way ANOVA. So I can go to STAT, ANOVA, one-way ANOVA, and then I can take data in different ways. So response data from one or more columns for different factors at different levels. And what I want are data in separate columns. Okay, And if I click in responses, I can see, okay, let's take a look at some of these different data types. So I want to take a look at um, C6, uh, C8, C10, C12, uh, C14, and C16. Okay, then I can choose graphs. And when I go to drafts, I can choose the box plots. Okay, and now what Minitab is going to do is it's going to do the analysis of variance on this data and tell us is this data unusual and show us the box plots. So, what do we see? Well, we see here is the box plot of this information. So here we see most of the data that we have here is coming out in this 10 seconds or less, okay? 20 or more and so forth, it's pretty much flat. And then over here, we see more distribution coming out at the end. And what we might recognize is, is this is a classical Weibull distribution plot. There's a lot of data here if this was a, a hardware product, we'd call this early life cycle. We have random distribution in terms of the distribution of data here. At the end of life, we have a failure plot. Okay, So this type of failure information is one way of looking at the process. If I go to the session window and I move up, you'll have to forgive me. I'm on a Macintosh, and I don't do Macintosh very well. So if I take a look up here. So Minitab says, okay, we're doing the one-way ANOVA, and we say, here are the different data sets. Is it statistically significant? Well, the p-value is less than 0.05, so it's statistically significant. And then we say, how significant is it? And we see that Minitab is going to calculate this in terms of... I need to move this down. I'll just brute force this. Okay, and R squared, so it says, this data is actually explaining about 72% of the variation, that it's coming from these different time slots. 
So one of the questions we might have is, what's happening that's time varying in the call answering process? Well, at the very beginning, one of the things that's happening is there's a voice recorder. And so the voice recorder is a computer trying to get you to go through and self-answer and solve your own problems. So at the front end, that's actually creating a delaying function. And then we have a performance process, and then the end is a different function. That's when the system is saturated and people can't answer the phone. So we see two different conditions or three different operating conditions happening in the life of the product. So again, the data is modeling, if you will, in a very quick way we can see this relationship and say, you know, we can explain a lot of the variation just by what's happening in those types of processes. But I still don't know what to fix. So now what I have to do is I have to go inside that data and understand the next step. So other things we can do here, we can take a look at uh, stat, quality tools, and then I can take a look at capability analysis, normal. Okay, and so if I take a look at capability analysis normal, and I have, whoops, I want to be in my different data set. So I just, I'm actually just using this to illustrate, you need to make sure you're in the right data set. I'm in the wrong one. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel that, come back to this other data she sheet here. So this is not call me 1A, I want 1B, and that's this one here. Now I'll come. Now we're going to get this. Okay, so we come back to quality tools, capability analysis normal. Okay, we have the date in one column, total seconds. Subgroup size is one. That says we're going to treat each observation as an individual item. Lower specification is zero. Upper specification, uh, they say that the best call centers answer all calls within 60 seconds. Now, this is going to be a little embarrassing, I know, but let's look at it this way. And then we take a look at this in terms of options. And we could ch put a target in here. So our target is less than um, uh, 60 seconds, or it could be 400 seconds, or whatever we want it to be. I'm not going to make it any more complicated, so I'll leave that open for right now. And just click OK. And so now we get the process capability study. So I'm going to sh now show this because... It just says this is all we get as the graph, okay? Now, what we see is here is that specification limits, those dashed lines there. Now, there's a lot of data there, but there's not much actually in that particular thing. We see the number of samples, it's a 9,203 we had, and very little of it is actually in that specification. As a matter of fact, most of it is outside the specification. We would want to see it as a normal distribution, so it's drawing distorted lines here, but we see this long tail coming all the way out here, plus 4,000. The design capability is 0.03. So what that means, if I multiplied that by three, it says the design of this process is 0.10%. Okay, so that means it's not a very well-designed process, and it's operating at a minus 0.3. So it means it's on the wrong side of the specification. So it's all, most of the data is outside the spec. So we have a very incapable process. Now, I don't need to be mathematically correct. I've got an engineering assumption. I have a terrible process. I don't care if I got this mathematical curve shown right. I understand exactly what the issue is. What I need to find out is why all this data is in the tail. That's the focus that I want to have, not being on mathematically correct. I'll be mathematically correct when I want to put this into a state of statistical control, but that's at the end of the DMAIC process, not at the beginning. When we're doing the diagnostics, what we want to do is as rapidly as we can get to the point where the data is telling us something that's important about the observations that we've seen. So now if I had more data, what I could do, or if I've classified these calls in certain ways, I could go to quality tools, and then I could come in here to Pareto chart, and I could actually go to the tables and start saying what were all the reasons for those calls and so forth. This data set wasn't really set up for that, but those are the four tools that we would want to use to iterate around this exploratory data analysis. So again, you can see they're easy to get in and get out of. If I want to understand them, they're the help function there for each one that we can then go back and do sort of a little self-tutorial on how to use those tools in the process. So. We're going to come back now. We're going to continue starting to get into the measure phase. 
Uh, we'll start using Minitab. We're going to have a couple of other Minitab functions that we're going to deal with. And you'll see some problems that you'll be able to work to work through these files, uh, these types of um, functions that we've shown you in Minitab. So uh, again, play with it, do the tutorials, look at the YouTube videos, treat it as an individual study package, and I think you'll find that it's actually pretty easy to use once you've gotten into it.